People hurting, people broken, beating down and feeling hopeless. Wonder if it's gonna always be this way. Who will speak up for the captive? Show some love and heal a past that binds the wounds we think will never go away. But what if we could be a people on our knees as one before the king? 'Cause we believe. When the church starts praying, strong walls start to break. Oh, when we pray, prison walls start shaking at the sound of praising. Nothing stays the same. Oh, when we pray, oh, 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 when we pray, oh, 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 oh. I see revival rising. I see hope. On the horizon, as a generation stepping out in faith, because we will be a people on our knees as one before the King, 'cause we believe. Hey, all the world starts changing when the church. Starts
Good morning, church. You're going to have to speak a little louder because I can't hear you from the mask. Good morning, church. Yeah. Okay, that sounded like... How about you just wave at me? Good morning, church. There we go. There we go. Just want to make sure you can hear me. Y'all ready to praise the Lord? Are y'all ready to praise the Lord? Stand to your feet. Let's praise the Lord. Come on and put your hands together. How many ready to go to war this morning? Well, I got joy in my soul because God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray.
Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're on the winning side this morning? Hallelujah. Woo. The presence of the Lord is in this place. And we've assembled in that name of Jesus. And we've come to worship. And we're going to see God do some great and mighty things. Amen. Woo. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome this morning, each and every one of you. And if you're visiting with us for the very first time here at the Fairlawn Church of God, we would like to say welcome to you this morning. And after service, if you wouldn't mind to meet us in the hospitality room, it's to my right, your left. We have a, a little gift that we would like to give to you. We'd just like to introduce ourselves to you. And maybe you've been coming for a little while and you haven't got to get back to the hospitality room. You're welcome to come on back, okay? So that's for all of our visitors. First-time visitors, thank you. All right, we have a few announcements that we need to make this morning. We're going to be having a business meeting after service this morning for all members, so please make plans to stay for just a little while so we can go over the business meeting. And this Wednesday, we're going to continue our series, Faith Through the Fire. Amen? How many of you know we have been through the fire? But praise God, we're going to have faith and put our trust in God. Amen. This Saturday, they're going to be having the Easter egg hunt at 11 a.m. So please make plans for those kids to be here. I know they're excited about it. And I know that uh, Pastor Adam and Pastor Amy have put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. So we want to make sure we remember the Easter egg hunt this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. And then next Sunday, Pastor Marcus will be concluding his series on the God of the turnaround. That's, let me hear that again, Kathy. <laughs> the God of the turnaround. Haven't we been blessed? Amen. I tell you, I'm thankful that God gave him that series. And I am thankful that God has used him to preach the word because I tell you what, it is God inside of me. Don't you love it when the word of God gets inside of you? Yes, amen. Give him a praise. Give him praise this morning. But the thing about it is, is even though this may be the next Sunday, may be the last one of the God of the turnaround, God's given him something else for us. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to also be having Believer's Communion on next Sunday uh, morning. So we're going to be having communion that Sunday morning, and we look forward to that. So we pray about that. And also the youth are going to be having a hot dog fundraiser for their trip to Winterfest. It will be here under the portico. It's to go only. So make plans. Don't go out and eat next Sunday, okay? Stop by and uh, get you a hot dog from the youth, and this will help them to be able to go to Winterfest. And that is such a blessing to our young people to be able to go. They didn't even get to go last year, so we're looking forward to that. So make plans for that. But remember, it's only to go. You'll take it home with you. I think that's all the announcements that I have. We're going to get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, if you would, wouldn't mind standing. We have... A lot, a lot of prayer requests this morning. But I am so thankful. And I say it every Sunday and I'm going to keep saying it. I'm thankful that we serve the prayer answering God. And we're going to take these needs and we're going to take these requests to the Lord. And we're going to have faith. Because we know that we serve the God of all possibilities. There is absolutely nothing impossible with our God we want to remember Doug Manuel in prayer we want to pray for him we want to pray for brother Terry McCraw I'm not sure what happened this morning but we want to hold him up in prayer we want to pray for Mary Kate Kidd she did get to come home but she's still having some issues and she really needs our prayers this morning so let's pray for her Bobby Gravely he will be having uh, surgery on his shoulder this coming Monday, so we want to pray for him. Billy Linkus, he had his eye surgery, and he still needs us to pray for him. We want to pray for uh, Pastor Terry and Sister Mary Lou. You know, Pastor Terry has COVID, and she's having symptoms of it. I don't know if she's tested positive or not, but we want to pray for them and lift them up before the Lord. 
We want to pray for Modine Questenberry, Juanita Questenberry, David Reed. We want to pray for Harvey Wilson. He went to a vascular doctor, and there's a small amount of blockage on each side, but he didn't need surgery, and we thank the Lord for that. But just keep him in your prayers. We want to pray for Eddie Woodyard and Pat Palmer. She's having issues with her eyes, and we want to pray that the medication that they have given to her will help her. We want to pray for um, Michael Berry and Brenda Muncy, Debbie Phillips' sister, Janice Forbes' sister, and Betty Sutphin's sister. They all need prayer. We want to continue to pray for Daryl Surface's brother, Vincent. He is in need of a miracle, and he needs uh, salvation, and we want to pray for him this morning. Martha King, they found something in her blood work, and she has to go to uh, the doctor on April 1st, so pray that she will get a good report from the doctors. We want to pray for Bishop David Blair. He's the Church of God International Youth Director. He has COVID, and he's not doing good at all, so we want to pray for him. We also want to pray for the Cromer family and the Albert family. If you have a need this morning and you want to just lift your hand before the Lord and we're going to take those needs to him and put our faith and our trust in God. We're so blessed to be in his house this morning. Let us all pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for blessing us with another day of life. It is so good to be able to gather together in your name, Lord. And we're thankful for each one that is here with us and those that are watching by Facebook Live, Lord. We just ask God that your spirit would have his will and his way this morning. God, we commit this service into your hands. And Lord, we just want to see you move in a mighty way. We thank you, God, for what you've done. And we're thankful, God, for what you're giving getting ready to do. You are that God of turnaround and we're so thankful this morning that we have the privilege and the opportunity to serve you, Lord. Father, this morning you've heard every name that we have called out this morning. You have seen every hand that has been raised in this sanctuary. And oh God, we give each and every one of these needs to you, knowing this morning that our God can do anything. We're thankful, Lord, that we stand on faith. Lord, we're believing and trusting in you. You are the God of miracles and the days of miracles are not over. You're the same yesterday, today and forever, Lord. And we praise you and thank you for that. And we're believing, God, that we're going to hear good reports of these names that we have called out and those hands that have been raised, Lord. We're putting our faith and our trust in you this morning. Father, we pray pray for Pastor Marcus as he brings forth the word. Thank you, Lord, for this series that you have laid upon his heart. You are the God of turnaround, and we're seeing turnaround happen right before our eyes, Lord, and we thank you, and we praise you for that, God, and we just ask, Lord, that you would bless throughout this service, Lord. God, we place it in your hands, and you know every need that has been brought into this sanctuary today, Lord. And God, I pray if there's anybody here today or watching my Facebook Live that doesn't know you as their Savior, I pray that today, hallelujah, would be the day that they would give their heart and their life to you and that they would serve you, God. Thank you so much for everything that you have done, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor. For we pray all of this in the mighty and the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all of his children said, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. We're going to get ready to take up our offering this morning if our ushers would come on down to the front and we want to thank you so much for your giving unto the Lord you are such a wonderful group of people giving people and we thank you so very much for what you have given and the wonderful thing is no matter what we do we can't ever outgive God can we we can never do that but I tell you what we have a faithful 
good bunch of giving people here. We really appreciate you. And I'm going to ask Brother Edward if he wouldn't mind to ask the blessing over our offering this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Amen. We'll ask our outer sections here if you all wouldn't mind to stand and exit towards the wall and come around and put your offering in this morning.
are you so grateful that our Lord breathes on us? I like to share something that happened last week in our service, and that was confirmed through a blessed brother of mine. But the Lord was moving so mightily in this place, and his presence was like water, and it was coming up to the knee on me. And I didn't understand what I was saying, but the Lord said, This is my presence. And if you want to get in deeper, you know what you got to do. So I knelt here on this platform to get into the presence of the Holy Ghost. And Brother Philip comes to me on Wednesday and says, Brother, while we were worshiping God, I seen a river of the presence of the Lord God in this place. And I was like, was it me, deep?" He said, yes. I was like, I seen the same thing. <laughs> and then my brother... My brother Timmy Harrison sent me Ezekiel 47. When the waters were flowing out of the temple of God. And he said he went in knee deep. Then he went in waist deep. Then he said it overtook him. And the only thing he could do was float. Then the Lord led Ezekiel out of the waters. And he said, this water is going to flow from this temple. And the trees will start to bear life and fruit. And sweet to the taste it will be. And then it will pour into the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea where nothing can live. And then there will be life springing out of that Dead Sea. Church, come on, I'm telling you. The Lord's planted this place to let the rivers flow from here into the New River Valley. And start to overtake and start to bring life back into the people of this place. He's going to pour his presence from this hub right here. And it's going to begin to renew those who are dead inside. It's going to begin to deliver those who are afflicted either through addictions or bondage or hurt. It's going to flow through this place. And they're going to flood into this place. Because you know what? I don't know about you. But when I get the taste of something good, I don't want to just be knee deep in it. Oh, no. I don't want to just be waist deep in it. I want to be completely surrounded by it. I want it to engulf me. The Lord said this to me. He's like, guess what? When you finally get that deep in my presence, you got to realize something. You ain't stepping anymore in your own way. He's like, you're following my presence because you're floating in my presence and you're allowing me to carry you to the next destination I want you. So I want you to receive that this morning, church, that this place in an instant when we decide to worship God, to praise Him, despite our circumstances, despite our hurts, that this place will turn into His throne room and you can come boldly. And you know what? Not just boldly as a priest, but you can come boldly as a son and daughter because that's how He looks at you. He's like, come on in. He's like, you're thinking you're at arm's length and that's where you got to stay. But I tell you what, you make one step to this altar and our Father God steps down to you and he starts hugging and loving on you. How we want to see this place turn into God's throne room this morning? Will you raise your hands with me this morning? Father God, I pray that your presence start to fall mighty like rain. Like we said, rain on us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, let the waters of your presence start to just get higher and higher and higher until your presence overflows like it did with Isaiah to the front, to the back, to the outer classrooms. And let it start to pour out of this place. And let it be a life-giving word to all those in the New River Valley. And Lord God, we give you all praise and all glory and all honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, just sit and just flow with him right now. Just let him begin to work in you.
morning. Come on, somebody magnify the Lord with me. Come on, exalt his name together. He was, he is, and he will be forever to come. The king enthroned in glorious splendor, God. Be exalted by our worship this morning. Be enthroned in our praise today. Amen, amen, and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord today. How many can say it's good to be in God's house? Man, I'm so blessed to look out and and see you worshiping the Lord. And so glad to look out and see you worshiping the Lord. The Spirit of God moving on your life, touching your heart. See your hands lifted to heaven. Man, thank God for His presence. Aren't you glad we serve a living God? A living God that is available and here this morning to touch you and to bless you and to strengthen you today. I'm so glad to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord this morning. And we welcome you to the Fairlawn Church of God. I'm going to go right into the ministry of the Word today. If you have your Bibles you want to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 61. We're going to begin reading in the first verse in that chapter, a passage we've been in for a few weeks as we have been in this series, Isaiah chapter 61. We're going to read the first three verses. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoner, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. Then it goes on to say, To comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, and the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise in exchange for your spirit of despair. And they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. Can the church say amen? We're going to continue this morning in the sermon series entitled, The God of the Turnaround. And I'm so thankful that God can take what the devil meant for evil and turn it around for our good. See, he can take what, what seems like a total disaster and turn it into a wonderful victory. He can turn your mess into your message and your test into your testimony. That is the God of the turnaround. And I'm here to tell somebody, if he did it for one, then he'll do it for all because he's no respecter of persons today week number one we talked about how God sees you and God hears you and God is available to rescue you then week two we talked about how he'll meet you where you are he loves you where you are but thank God he loves us enough that he won't leave us where we are in week three we talked about how we are dream catchers and The devil is a dream killer, but God is a dream restorer. And then last week we talked about the calling that God has on our life. We've all got a purpose from the Almighty that the devil wants to stop at all costs because he does not want you to walk in your God-given destiny. So he'll use your weaknesses against you as stumbling blocks. See, the devil knows your weakness, but God knows your strength. And your strength is not by might, and it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. See, our opening text is a portion of scripture that Jesus when he went into the temple was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and he opened up that scroll and began to read from this very text and when he was finished he declared this he said today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing so Jesus was declaring that day to all of them and to all of us that his father sent him for this reason to proclaim good news to the poor to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim freedom for the 
captive and to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for Psalms chapter 30 verse number 5 that said his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. For weeping only endures through the night, but joy comes in the morning. See, I know some of you have done your fair share of weeping. You've mourned some losses, especially over the past 12 months of your life. You've lost some loved ones. You've lost careers. Some of you have lost health. You've lost some blessings along life's way. But I want to remind you this morning of a few things that you have not lost Because you have not lost your hope. And you have not lost the joy of the Lord. And you have not lost your faith. But most of all, you have not lost your praise. Because God has promised that he'll give you the oil of joy in place of mourning. And God has promised that he'll give you a spirit of praise in exchange for your spirit of despair. I'm here to tell somebody today that it's time to get off the mourner's bench and it's time to put on your shouting shoes because I believe that God is about ready to turn some things around in your life and in this house and in this old world and I believe that he's about to do it suddenly because he is the God of the turnaround he alone You desire his presence this morning. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands in his presence today. He is the God of the turnaround. He alone, listen church, can turn a funeral procession into a praise celebration. He alone can turn a death sentence into a commemoration of life. And he alone can turn your temporary troubles into an eternal glory. And the Bible said the glory will far outweigh all of your troubles. Hallelujah. I read a story about a man by the name, a boy by the name of John Smith. Not Pocahontas, but Another John Smith. This particular John Smith grew up in Guatemala. His parents came to Guatemala as missionaries. The Lord began leading them, prompting them, Sister Lisa, to adopt this little boy. You know what that feels like. But his parents were, were, were a little bit up in age. Their children had all grown and moved out of the home. And they kind of argued with the Lord a little bit. And finally, they obeyed the prompting, the leading of the Lord. And they adopted this little five-year-old little boy from Guatemala. And at the age of, of 14, back in January of 2015, John and two of his little friends went down to Lake St. Louis in Missouri. They decided they were going to play some hockey that day on the frozen lake. So they went out on the lake and they took this picture just before the ice broke. And those three young boys, teenagers, fell through that broken ice into the sub-zero temperatures of the water. His two friends were able to climb out of the lake almost immediately. But John was not quite so lucky. He got, went under the ice and was submerged in the water, completely submerged for 15 minutes. 
It was a miracle that, that the firefighters and the rescue workers were even able to find John. But thanks be to the Lord, they, they found him and they were able to retrieve his lifeless body from the water. And he's rushed to the ER and the doctors worked on him and worked on him for nearly 45 minutes. And one nurse said she kept her finger on John's pulse the, the entire time just hoping that something was going to change. But after nearly an hour... She said there was no pulse. So the doctors declared John dead. And they called in his mother. She said she walked into the room and the tears began to fall off of her face. And she seen her little boy laying there and she said he was already gray. She laid her hand over on his foot. She said his foot was cold. She knew that his spirit was gone. And she began to cry out to God in an act of desperation. She said, God, you, you told me to adopt this little boy and bring him from Guatemala. And I just don't think this is your plan. And she began to beg God to, to spare her son. And she began to declare life over John in the name of Jesus. Right there in front of all the doctors and, and all the nurses. She's declaring life and declaring the word over her boy. And she said, while the, one of the nurses said while she was standing there that she... She could feel something coming up John's body. And she said it was almost like a fire. And it was started at his feet and started coming up. And by the time he got to his head, where the nurse was at, she said the power was so strong that it literally pushed the nurse back away from John's bed. And she said almost immediately that flat line on the heart monitor started to show a heartbeat. And John was resurrected from the dead right there in that hospital room. All because one mother declared to believe in the God of the turnaround. But you know what was even more amazing? Not just his resurrection from the dead, but it was John's subsequent recovery. Because he went for an hour with no heartbeat. He went for nearly an hour with no oxygen going to his brain. But John walked out of that hospital without any ongoing complications and he walked out with normal brain function today John is on a full scholarship to North Central University in Minneapolis and he's studying to be a pastor see you may be familiar with his story because back in 2019 it was turned into a Hollywood blockbuster movie called Breakthrough and I want you to know that title it points more than just a boy that broke through some ice, but it points to the God of the turnaround that can break through into your life story and he'll give you beauty for ashes and strength for fear, gladness for mourning and a peace for despair. Breakthrough. See, I believe God wants to declare life over some of you this morning. I believe he wants to declare life over some dead areas in your life. John chapter 10, verse number 10. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he said, I've come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. That is literally translated to life the way God has it. And I want you to know you don't have to wait till heaven to experience that kind of life. But you can live your glory days. You can live your best days right here, right now. Because Jesus has come to declare life over his church and over his children today. You know, there's a story in the Bible of a mother who is grieving the loss of her son. Luke chapter 7, verses 11 and 12 said, Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his followers and a large crowd followed there, traveled with him. And when he came near the town gate, he saw... A funeral it was a mother who was a widow. She had lost her only son. A large crowd from the town was with the mother while her son was being carried out. And what really drew my attention to this story was the Lord's response to this bleak situation. Because the first thing that Jesus did 
was he comforted the mother. Luke chapter 7 verse number 13 said when the Lord saw her, he, he felt very sorry for her and he said, do not cry. Aren't you glad today? Doesn't it do your heart good today to know that God is touched by the feelings of your infirmities? See, we don't have a high priest who is afar off and unable to empathize with us, but he hurts when he, we hurt. He felt sorry for this widow because in those days to be a widow meant she had no rights. She had no ability now to own property or, or to own a business. She really had no good standing in the community any longer. Her only hope was in her only son. And now her son is being carried out of town on a stretcher to be buried near her father. The Lord felt sorry for the widow. And he said, do not cry. And I thought, well, isn't that somehow to do? I mean, here you are in a funeral. Burying your only son. I mean, how would you feel if somebody walked up to you at the funeral of your, of your, of your father, the funeral of your husband, your wife, and they said, oh, don't cry. It'll be all right. I thought, how, how could Jesus say, D do not cry? Of course I'm going to cry. How could he say that? Do not cry. I'll tell you why. Because he knew what he was about to do for her. See, Jesus knew that he was about to turn this thing around. Jesus knew that he was about to give her a spirit of praise in exchange for a garment of heaviness. So he said, do not cry. He comforted her with hope. Another way to describe comfort is to reassure See, I believe that's what God does for every one of us when we find ourselves in the middle of a situation that's beyond our control. He comforts us or He reassures us that He's still on the throne. He reassures us that He can still calm the storm. He reassures us that He can still build a bridge over troubled water. And He reassures us that He can still turn this thing around even on your deathbed, even when they're carrying your dead body out on a stretcher he can still turn it around and work it together for your good so he comforted her because he knew what he was about to do for her and I want somebody to hear me. He knows what he's about to do for you too. You might not see it just yet. But church, hold on. Do not cry. Dry your eyes because he is the God of the turnaround. If you believe it, say amen. Not only did he comfort the mother, but I thought something else was interesting. He also touched the son. See, the Bible said in Luke 7, 14 that Jesus went up and he touched the coffin where the dead boy was laying. And the Bible said the people who were carrying the coffin, they stopped in their tracks. You know why they stopped? Because back then it was very taboo to touch a dead body. If you touched a dead body or a coffin that a dead body was in, guess what? You were pronounced unclean and you had to go outside of the area where they were staying. It was very taboo to touch a coffin or touch a dead body. But it was also taboo to touch a leper. It was also probably taboo to stick your finger in a deaf man's ear. It was also taboo to take your finger and touch the tongue of a man that could not speak. But I'm here to tell somebody that Jesus touched them all. And when Jesus touched them, their lives were forever changed. See, the lame could leap and the dumb could speak and the deaf could hear and the dead could live again. And see, when Jesus touched them, it wasn't just the sympathetic touch of man it was the empathetic touch of God because God felt their pain and he wanted to turn that situation around I, th I thought about Peter when Peter was sinking deep in the waves and Jesus reached out 
that holy hand and it grabbed a hold of Peter and pulled him up out of the water. I just wondered if there's anybody today that's happy to know when you were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, that Jesus reached out his holy hand and he got a hold of you. Oh, I thought about that old song that says, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul cause something wonderful happened and now I know that he touched me and made me whole can anybody testify to that this morning Jesus has touched my life I want you to know his hand is not too short that he can't still reach down in the middle of your situation he'll touch you and he'll turn it around he did it for the leper He did it for the blind man. He did it for this dead boy. And he will do it for you too. If you believe it, shout amen. He comforted the mother. And then Jesus touched the son. And I'm closing with this. But the best news of all is that dead boy didn't stay in that casket. He didn't stay in that stretcher being carried out of town because not only did Jesus comfort his mother and not only did Jesus touch the son, but when he touched him, everything changed because Jesus spoke life and he resurrected the dead. Luke chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. Jesus said, young man, I tell you, get up. And can I tell somebody, he didn't have to say it, but once. And the Bible said the dead man sat up and he began to speak. Listen to me, somebody. I want you to know that death has to walk out when Jesus walks in. Because he is the resurrection and the life. The Bible said we were dead in our trespasses and sins but God made us alive in Christ Jesus see the greatest resurrection of all time I believe is when a dead man walking in sin and iniquity he receives the gift of everlasting life through the shed blood of Jesus but God doesn't just want to resurrect you spiritually I believe he wants to resurrect you physically I believe he wants to speak life, declare life over some dead areas in your life. If you don't believe he's able to raise the dead, just go ask that widow from Nain. If you don't believe Jesus can raise the dead, just go ask old Jairus' daughter. If you don't believe Jesus can raise the dead, somebody go ask Lazarus. Whom the Bible said he had been dead for so long, his sisters were afraid that he might stinketh. I, I heard a I heard a, a pastor preach one time. He said, "You know, it's a good thing that Jesus was specific when he went to the tomb of Lazarus. It's a good thing that he said Lazarus." come forth because if he'd have just said come forth every dead man in that graveyard would have come walking alive out of their tomb because Jesus has come to declare life over you what did John 10 10 say the thief comes to steal to kill to destroy we talked about this a little bit last week I want you to hear me church the devil is determined to take you out. He's already sent the grave diggers to dig up your grave. He's already mapped out a plan for your destruction. He's already tuning up the band to play your funeral song. He's come to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, that's not the end of your story. Because I have come. Jesus has come. That you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. I came by to encourage somebody. Don't ever underestimate the power of the God of the turnaround. Because it ain't over until God says it's over. He wants to give you life today. It may be resurrection life over a bad doctor's report. 
It may be restoring life for a dead dream in your heart. It may be reinvested life for your finances. It may be renewed life for your marriage. But I'm here to tell somebody, whatever the enemy is trying to destroy in your life, God has come by this morning to stop the funeral procession. He's come by, I believe, today to give you a garment of praise in exchange for your garment of heaviness. Do not cry, child of God. Wipe your eyes and dry your tears because God is here to comfort you. God is here to touch you. And God is here to speak life and resurrect some dead things in your life. If you believe it, somebody Jump to your feet and give God a shout of praise today. Hallelujah. 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 Because He is, y'all come on. He is the God of the turnaround. I want you to listen to this song we're going to sing for just a moment as a reminder that you may have lost some things. You may be mourning some losses today but weeping only endures through the night because joy comes with the morning because you haven't lost your hope you haven't lost the joy of the Lord you have not lost your faith but most of all I said most of all you have not lost your praise worship Adonna them this morning as we sing this song as a reminder to you you haven't lost everything hallelujah oh i've lost some good friends along life's journey but i've lost Oh, aren't you thankful for that? Listen. Oh, some of you can identify with that. Listen, declare this in my season. One thing never wavers. say that this morning. I never lost my joy. I never lost my joy. Come on, say, I never lost my faith. I never lost my faith. 
Just a reminder that you may have lost a lot. You might can look back and over the past months, maybe years of your life and tally up the losses. But I want this to serve as a reminder to you that you have not lost everything. You still have the joy of the Lord. The Bible said, and it'll be your strength. You still have hope today because hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. You still have faith. All it takes is a little faith, the size of a grain of mustard seed, and you can speak to the mountains. And the Bible said the mountains shall be removed, and you still have your song of praise today. You can praise Him in the midnight hours of your life. You can praise Him shackled in a Philippian jail. And when you do, let me tell you, God will show up and He'll show off in the middle of your trouble, in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your trial. I don't know what maybe some of you are going through today, but I know this, God is here and He wants to comfort you. Jesus said, I've come to comfort those who mourn come to provide for those who grieve in Zion. I wonder for some folks that can identify with that today. Maybe you've been through some hardships. You've been through some struggles. You've been through the test of your life. Maybe you've lost some folks. You've lost loved ones. Maybe you've lost health. Maybe you've lost a job. Man, whatever it is, it, it's put a, a taxing situation on you and your family. But you just need the reminder of the Lord today. That he can comfort you and touch you and declare life over the dead areas that the enemies tried to destroy. That he can declare life today because it's not over until God says it's over. If you're in that situation this morning, you can identify with what I've just said. You'd like special prayer today. I'm going to invite you to step out come down to the altar. We want to just lay hands on you and pray for you and ask God to do what only He can do, to do what He promised He will do, and that's comfort those that mourn and provide for those that grieve in Zion. Pastor Johnny, would you come and help me pray for them this morning? Come on, let's sing that little chorus again as they come. Well, I never lost my hope. I never lost. Listen, I never lost my joy. I never
satisfy can't nobody do you like Jesus because there's nothing nothing in this old world better than you or there's nothing Lord there's nothing better than you since early well let's just take a few minutes just a few minutes spend some time there in his presence this morning
He'll turn bones into armies. Your grave into a garden. He'll give you dancing for weeping. Because he's come to make an exchange with you today. That's a spirit of praise. A garment of praise. Exchange for your garment of despair. Man, thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Those of you watching by Facebook Live, we declare that he is the God of the turnaround. And if he did it for one, he's going to do it for all. Amen. I'm going to dismiss you from this service. However, if you are a member of our church, if you would please just maybe get your drink of water, use the restroom if you need to, but come back and have a seat. We have just a quick annual business meeting that we need to uh, attend to for just a, just a few moments. If you're a member, and would stay with us maybe for 10, 15 minutes, probably at the max. We'll have our, our business meeting. And we'll play just a little bit of that. We, we were going to sing an old song, but since it's already 1230, let's play a little bit of that higher ground. We might sing a little chorus or two, and then we'll let them play for a little bit while we take a little break in between.